We all know how important consistency is. Doing the work day in and day out. Working a focused four hours per day for an entire week will get you much further than pulling an all-nighter once or twice a week. And that's why you'll hear people say things like consistency beats intensity. And it's true, but this principle it misses something. It's incomplete because it downplays the benefits and power of intensity. What you really want is to operate with what I call consistent intensity. You want to be both consistent and intense in your work and your focus. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to cultivate this consistent intensity. I'm going to not only show you how to be more consistent in what you do, but also how to operate with intensity so that you can push past plateaus, get more work done, and achieve things you never thought were possible. Now let's start with some simple definitions. What is consistency? Well, it's doing the work every day. It's showing up. It's putting in the hours regardless of whether you feel like doing it or not. Intensity, on the other hand, is acting with power, with speed, with extreme focus, with a, with a sense of urgency. So consistent intensity is these two things combined. It's doing the work every day with force, power, speed and extreme focus. It's doing the work consistently and with intensity. Now, most people struggle with one or the other. Some people can work with great intensity, but they lack consistency. So they jump from one project to the next uh, and work in short, intense bursts, which provide this motivational high that doesn't last. And they often fail to see projects through to completion for this reason, or they'll achieve some small success and then take their foot off the gas pedal completely. Other people are relatively consistent, but they lack intensity. So they show up every day, they get some work done, but there's something lacking. They are coasting. They could operate faster and achieve what they want in less time if they just dialed up the intensity. And often these people who have consistency but not intensity, they know that they're kind of playing a small game, that they could be doing more. And then the third group are those who lack both, who are not consistent and do not operate with intensity. And I'm willing to bet that quite a few people watching this are in that camp. So if that's you, this video is for you too. So let's talk first about how to be more consistent and then we'll move on to how to develop intensity. If you needed to choose between one, consistency or intensity, then you would choose consistency. Fortunately, you don't have to choose. But if you could only pick one, then you should choose consistency for obvious reasons. Number one, it is inevitable that you'll make progress if you just sit down and do the work every day, even if there's not that much intensity involved. But it is not guaranteed that you'll make progress with short bursts of intensity. Second, it's much easier to add intensity to consistency than the other way around. When you're consistent, you have this baseline level of ability to focus. Finally, most things worth doing take time, weeks and months of work. Intensity cannot be maintained over those time periods without strong consistency already there at the foundation. So how do you develop it? How do you become more consistent? I am working on another video entirely dedicated to this topic of developing consistency. That will be much more in depth, so keep an eye out for that. But here are a few powerful ways to develop consistency. The first is to get external accountability. Accountability is by far the biggest hack I know of to kick yourself out of an action and start being consistent. If you're like most people watching this YouTube channel, you are either a student, you're a remote worker, you're a freelancer, solopreneur, entrepreneur, or you're just trying to work on a project of your own. Maybe it's a side project or a side hustle outside of your day job. Whatever the case, what you're doing is likely self-directed. If you don't feel like working, it's very easy to just not work. It's very easy to come up with excuses. But when you have external accountability, it's much easier to stay on track. It also helps if it costs you something. And I mean that financially. And I'm not just saying that because I offer coaching and I run Work Sprint, which is an accountability centric cohort aimed at helping people be more consistent and get work done. I'm saying it because it adds skin in the game. I have been part of so many accountability groups and had accountability partners and they just quickly sort of die out. And it's because people don't have skin in the game. 
We had people in the last work sprint cohort who hadn't been consistent for years until they joined and finally found that accountability they needed to stay on track. And part of that was that it costs to sign up. So accountability, external accountability is powerful. Figure out how you can get it. Figure out how you can put some skin in the game, have some stakes, uh, whether it's finding another person and making some sort of bet that if you don't do the work, then you have to pay them money or something else entirely. But make sure that you get it. Another helpful way to improve your ability to be consistent, to improve your consistency, is to look at the surrounding environment and habits in your life and in your work. The obvious advice of just sit down and do the work every day, it only gets you so far because at some point your internal infrastructure is going to break down. You'll have a bad sleep, you'll get distracted by something, you'll fall back into old habits of procrastination and analysis paralysis. It's important to be aware of these and do things to combat them. For example, I have an acute awareness of what causes me to procrastinate and lapse in my consistency. Poor sleep, as tempted as I am to stay up late and watch Netflix or have a couple more drinks, I know that I'll be far less likely to sit down and do deep work the next day if I do those things because it will cause me to have a worse sleep, I'll feel more tired, it's just a nightmare for getting work done. Second is a delay in starting work each day. So I try and start work as soon as possible every morning. Uh, and the longer I delay this, the longer I put things in the way and avoid it, the more likely I am to keep delaying and avoiding it. And for this reason, I avoid meetings in the morning, at least as much as I can. Uh, and like I said, I start work pretty much as soon as I can each day. The third thing is overthinking. This will pull me out of a weekly chain of consistent daily work like nothing else. I get to a point in a project or working towards a goal where I start second guessing myself and I end up changing course or falling back into the decision making mode uh, when I really should just be carrying on and seeing the project through to completion and doing the work. And the fourth thing is a lack of clarity and a lack of good planning. I'm far more likely to be consistent if I know what I'm working on each day as opposed to just planning as I go. There's a bunch of other things, but the point is that these are things surrounding the habit of consistency that need to be addressed and need to be managed in order to keep that consistency alive. So look at your habits, look at your environment, reflect on what's held you back from being consistent in the past. And there's a few questions that you can ask yourself to help reflect on this. And I'll put them up on the screen so you can have a look. When did I last have an extended streak of consistent daily work and what conditions led to that? How can I recreate them? In the past week or so, what's caused me to procrastinate? What are the triggers? Where am I self-sabotaging? Am I purposefully creating conditions subconsciously that lead me to procrastinate and avoid discomfort? What would the perfect day look like for me and what do I need to do to move closer towards it? Another helpful tip to develop consistency is to chase flow, chase fulfillment, and be extremely aware of how good it feels when you're sitting down and doing the work and being consistent. Now this advice, it seems kind of vague and it's hard to articulate, but it's one of the best things I've done personally to build massive momentum and consistency. When you're in the middle of deep work, there's a certain feeling that you get that cannot be matched by anything else. You can call it flow, you can call it dopamine, you can call it whatever you want. The point is that it exists and it's incredible. But when we're not consistent, we quickly forget that feeling. We forget how satisfying and good it feels to be consistently doing that deep work. So one thing that's helped me is just to acknowledge as often as I can, how good it feels when I'm engaging in the work. Like, as I was writing the script for this video, I took a brief look out the window and thought, damn, this is great, I'm in flow, it feels so good, I feel like I'm making progress, I wanna feel this every day. And the simple act of observing that feeling and acknowledging it will keep it at the forefront of your mind. You will want to experience that feeling again, and you know that it's better than the feeling of avoidance of procrastination and of not doing the work. A final tip for developing consistency is to keep momentum through the breaks and the days off. I think there's something powerful in pushing forward every day, even if it's just a little bit. And that's what we do in Work Sprint, it's 21 days of focused effort, including weekends. But there is also value in taking 
a day off or two days off per week, right? And that's often where the best ideas come from when we're going for a leisurely weekend hike, uh, spending time with the family, doing something else entirely outside of work. The question is how do you remain consistent when you have these breaks, whether it's taking Saturday and Sunday off, you get back on Monday, the consistency you had developed now seems like it's gone. What can you do about that? Well, there's two things that have helped me. The first is that before you take an extended break, let's say it's a weekend, clearly define the next steps that you have to do come Monday or the next day that you start working again. When you don't define these, when you don't have a clear plan, it's very easy to you know, take another day or spend some time just procrastinating because there's no clarity there. You don't know what the next action is. The second thing is to know what the next project or goal is, which sounds similar, but sometimes you wanna take a break after a big project and that's fine. But what I've found is that when I take too long of a break without having another project lined up, I cannot leverage the consistency that I've built up with the prior project. So I like taking shorter breaks and rolling that momentum and that consistency and those work habits straight into the next project. Sometimes I'm so excited to move on to the next project that I don't take a break at all, and this has also been helpful. So if you're taking a break because you've finished something, make sure that you have something else lined up so you don't fall into the trap of, ah, oh, well, I've achieved something, I'm gonna take some time off, and that time off becomes a week, two weeks, a month. And before you know it, you have lost the habit of doing the work every day and being consistent. So now that we've covered a few ways to be more consistent, let's have a look at how to develop intensity. Intensity is different to consistency and to develop it, there are different things that we need to do. So let's look at five ways we can cultivate this intensity. The first is to condition yourself to push past plateaus. You will likely reach a point where you're consistent, you're doing the work, but maybe it's only 90 minutes per day or an hour per day and you want to double the length of focus time to three hours and you wanna increase the actual output that occurs in that time. You wanna work faster and more effectively. Because in the world of knowledge work, aside from making the right decisions, those are the two things that matter most. Person A and person B might sit down at their computer for the same amount of time every day, but person A could be getting twice as much done because they're just working better. Like they're just more effective. They operate with intensity. But to cultivate that intensity, there's a level of discomfort and pain that you have to push through. What does this look like? What does pushing through that plateau look like? Well, it's increasing your mental focus during each session. It's going a few minutes longer when you feel like giving up. It's setting a 25 minute timer and then canceling it because you just wanna work and focus for as long as you can without stopping. And I say condition yourself to push past the plateaus because that's exactly what it is. It's training. It's training so that you can work faster, you can work longer, and you can work deeper. The second way to cultivate intensity is force yourself to complete something fast. One of the most intense work periods in my life and also one of the most enjoyable periods in my life was when I drafted and edited an entire book, 25,000 words I think it was, in 30 days. I was putting in four hours of work every day, but they were intense hours. They were extremely focused and there's just no way I could have put in another two, three, four hours of that type of work each day. I had set a deadline, I had accountability, I had skin in the game because if I failed this 30 day project, I would have to pay uh, my brother a thousand dollars, which at the time was way too much money and I just couldn't afford it, so I had to get it done. I had no choice but to operate with intensity. So two pieces of advice here. Number one is to work on a project that can be completed in a short time frame. Set a deadline, get accountability, launch it fast. And the deadline should feel hard. Like it, it shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be thinking about your project and going, oh yeah, I can definitely get this done in a month. It should be more like, this is a three month project and I'm going to get it done in a month somehow. I don't know how, but I'm going to force myself to get it done. And the second piece of advice is basically that, like whatever you're working towards, whatever project you have, shorten the deadline. So whatever deadline you come up with, make it shorter. Can you finish it earlier? Can you finish it in half the time? The third way to cultivate intensity is to map it out and remove Friction. Flow encourages intensity and friction destroys it. When you are midway through a goal 
or a project and you get stuck, you start to lose that intensity. You fall back into planning mode or decision making mode and the consistent intensity that you had built up quickly fades. One way to avoid this is to map out what you need to do as much as possible in the beginning. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you have to have a complex project plan. I'm just saying that you need some clarity and direction so that you don't keep second guessing. So in the case of me writing my book in 30 days, I had a plan and that plan was, I'm gonna spend 20 days writing, four hours a day. I can get X amount of words done in that time frame on average. The 10 days after those 20 days, or the last 10 days, I'm gonna edit and I'm going to design and finish it all up. And so that was my plan. So at no point during that month was I second guessing myself. I knew what I had to do. The fourth tip for cultivating intensity is to lean into what energizes you. One reason I'm not a fan of the personal productivity advice industry, let's call it the productivity industrial complex, uh, is because these gurus, they often ignore core drivers that give us massive amounts of energy and enable us to do great work. Like, does a new method of project planning really energize you? Does a new task management app energize you? The answer is not really. And I know some of you will be like, oh, well, there's a study that shows, no. Like, these things do not energize you over the long term. No one who's been using Notion for a year wakes up every day energized that they get to work in Notion. It's just a tool. But there are core drivers that do energize us. Ambition, the desire to achieve, the desire for status, uh, competition, wanting to win, collaboration, wanting to work with others, fear, hope, you name it. These are deep internal drivers that we would be stupid to ignore. So you want to know what energizes you. What are those core internal drivers? And I know there's gonna be some people watching this who are like, oh yeah, well it's unhealthy to be motivated by fear or by competition. Look, I'm not a psychotherapist. I don't know whether it's unhealthy or not. I just know that it's worked for me. For me, I'm competitive. I used to suppress and ignore this drive to my detriment. I thought or was told that it was unhealthy, but I don't think it is. Many people are competitive. It feels good to be competitive, at least to me, and it energizes me. I also love building things, whether it's a business or a product or whatever. And so if I can leverage both the desire for competition and the desire to build, then I'm going to act with intensity because I am energized. So it's worth thinking about what these drivers are for you. It might not be competition. It might be something else. Think back to a time where you acted with intensity. What was driving you? What was that core emotion if there was one? And how can you get it back? And the fifth and final tip for cultivating intensity, super simple, is just to create some pressure. Pressure is the shortcut. There's no better way to create intensity than to add pressure. And if you don't add it yourself, it will eventually be added for you. And it is better to add it yourself because then you can design it and it's a lot less stressful. When there are no stakes, no risk, no deadlines, then there's no pressure. And as a result, intensity just isn't needed. It's just a nice to have and nice to haves are always ignored. Okay, so we looked at how to develop consistency, how to cultivate intensity, and why you should do both. Now, to wrap this video up, I want to talk about a way to cultivate both of them at once. If you like the idea of operating with consistent intensity, then you might be interested in Work Sprint. Work Sprint is a 21-day group challenge where you make massive progress towards a single project or goal. The whole ethos of the sprint is to push, to do more, to be consistent, to operate with intensity, to stop making excuses. And the reason it works is because of the accountability system that is in place. Every day or the night before, you share with the community what your task your goal is for the day, and at the end of the day, you check in again to confirm that you have done what you said you were gonna do. And there's a public dashboard, so everyone can see you know, who's sticking with it and who's not. Beyond that, there are a few other features inside Work Sprint that help you develop this consistent intensity. We have Q&A training and check-in calls once a week. Uh, this helps you stay on track, remove any bottlenecks you have, get any help, get any advice, and it just keeps the momentum up. We also have virtual co-working sessions. So, these are Zoom calls where we spend a few hours, we're all on mute, and we just spend 45 minutes focusing, we'll take a 15 minute break, review, reflect, and do the next 45 minute session. The people who join these tend to get quite a lot of work done. And finally, 
there's community and there's an energy that's attached to that. There's a specific vibe that WorkSprint creates, right? Like everyone's working on their own individual projects, but at the same time, we're all putting in this consistent effort and building each other up, which I think is powerful. So if you want to join the next WorkSprint, we are starting on April 3rd. Head on over to WorkSprint.co. There's a link down there in the description and make sure to sign up. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.